Hi everyone, my name is Rabbi Sam Bluston, and I'm here to show you today how to make your computer more Shabbat friendly to be able to use it with Zoom services and other sorts of streaming services which are happening online now. There are things which we can do to reduce the number of halachic violations um, and it'll open up the screens automatically so that we can just watch the services as they take place. The suggestions in this video come from a tshuva that was approved by the CJLS, the Conservative Movement's Committee on Jewish Law and Standards, written by Josh Heller. And it talks about the different ways in which streaming services can be used and accessed on Shabbat and Yom Tov. The first step here is to find the tshuva, which you can find on the Rabbinic Assembly's website if you go to Jewish Law, Committee on Jewish Law and Standards. And over here you go to Orachayim. So go down here to the Shabbat section, and you'll find towards the bottom Joshua Heller's streaming services on Shabbat and Yom Tov. You can click on that. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on the appendix, which is Appendix 3, at the very end of the document, beginning on page 33, making technology more Shabbat friendly. So the first step, as Rabbi Heller puts it, is to turn off automatic sleep mode so you don't have to wake it up or re-enter the password. This basically means your computer won't shut off at all. So however you set it up prior to Shabbat, it will still remain on and awake and usable. You won't have to log in, you won't have to put in your password, you won't have to do anything to be able to turn it back on. So there are a couple of steps to do this. Um, I'm going to be showing you on a PC on Windows. Uh, if you're using an iPhone or a Mac, uh, there are it's a very similar process that I'll that to the process that I'll walk you through, and I'll explain what to do differently once we get to that point. Once it actually diverges more fully, in order to turn off automatic sleep mode, we can come down here and go to our settings, and in our settings, I'll go back to the main page which comes up. You'll go to System, Power, and Sleep. And there are two options here. One is screen and one is sleep. You want to make sure that both of them are set properly. So when plugged in, if you're plugging in your computer, which I would recommend, turn off after. At the very bottom is never. Then in sleep, it's the same thing. When plugged in, you'll select never. And that basically means your computer won't turn off. There's one more thing we need to do, though, which is to turn off any screensaver settings. So if you go up here into the search box and just, just type in screensaver, you see here, turn off screen saver, turn screen saver on or off. And we'll click on it, it opens up here. And you just wanna make sure that here in screen saver you have none. And we can apply it. And the first step is set up, your computer won't turn off, it won't go to a screen saver, it'll stay on. The second step here is to set windows or your Mac to automatically log on to a website or a Zoom call at a specific time. So this is if you can't open up the Zoom call ahead of time, if it's not a 24-hour Zoom, or maybe it's a two-day Chag and you want to tune in on the second day. What you can do is schedule a tab to actually open to that particular browser or that particular website or that particular Zoom call at a given time. So step one, make sure you're using Chrome, which I'm using here download a Chrome extension called Tab Schedule. So we click on it and we come to here. So I'm gonna come over, add to Chrome, add extension, and we wait for it to do its thing. So now here you can schedule a new URL at any time. And to find that, it's up here in the, uh, the add-ons. You can see Tab Schedule here, it'll take you back to that page. This function works whether you're adding a Zoom link or any other link, you're trying to get to a Facebook Live uh, chats or a YouTube link, whatever it might be. You can just put in, let's say, just for fun, facebook.com, add URL, and down here you can select a day and a time to open up that window. And that's really as simple as it is. So that's the first step to opening it up. Now, if you wanted to work with Zoom, there are a couple additional steps, and this is where it gets a little complicated, and where Windows diverges slightly from Mac or Apple. So the first thing we need to do is to enable the Zoom app. We need to log into our account. So you can go to zoom.us and make sure that your account is logged in and saved on your computer. So I'm gonna do that. 
you can come in here to sign in. You can see that I'm not signed in permanently because it's not remembering me, but I need to make sure that that happens. So I'll sign in. All right, so I'm signed in. I want to make sure that I click stay signed in. And hopefully it will work this time. Now we're here in Zoom. We're all signed in. The next step is the complicated one. You need to allow Chrome to automatically launch Zoom. So if you don't do this, you have to actually click a checkbox each time to allow it to open Zoom. So on a Mac computer, you will open your terminal app, which you can find here. You'll paste this text here, the whole thing, into the terminal app and press Enter, and then restart Chrome. On a PC, which is what we're using, we want to download the file at this link, which I have open here. And I'm going to go ahead and download it. Now note the note here. It says, click on it. This will pro provoke some scary warning message about editing your Windows registry. Go ahead and do that. And then afterwards, we're going to reboot our computer. So we have a download. It'll open here. This is one scary message. And click Run. All right, so here's the scary message number two. We want to continue. All right, so it's successfully been added, which is a good sign. Now we'll go back here. So the next step is to reboot our computer, which I'm going to do, and then I'll meet you on the other side. I've now rebooted my computer, which is step three here. And what we can do again then is open Chrome, and we can go back to our tab schedule. And we can put in the Zoom address and the invitation. If the room has a password, which, which it should, you will need the long form that encodes the password as well. For example, so you can see here in his example, it has password and then it has an encrypted password. And then add URL. You can then have a field where you can add a day and time, choose the day of the week and the time, and hit the plus sign. You can repeat this process for multiple Zoom rooms and multiple dates for each one. First time you do it, you'll get a pop-up. This is what I'm going to show you now, asking if you should always open this type of link in another program. Check the box and say yes, and then you will not see this box in the future. So uh, I have created a Zoom room, which you can see here. I have the password. And today is Thursday. It is currently 5.14 PM. So I'm going to put this for 5.15 PM. And we should be good to go in a minute. It'll open the tab. It added a time because I missed the window. I didn't hit the add over here. So now we see that Zoom is beginning to open here. And we want to make sure we click here, automatically join audio by computer when joining a meeting. To make sure it automatically joins, the screen will come up again. So join with computer audio. And now we're into the Zoom room. Uh, you can see here that both I'm muted and the video is off. So we would need to take care of those by going into our settings. Before we go to take care of the issues with muting and with the video off, uh, I want to just pause to make a couple of, of important points here. Um, one of them is that we need to turn on the video and audio, which I'm going to show you, which we're going to figure out how to do in a second. Uh, the second is remember to test these things ahead of time. So I'm basically testing them as I'm talking to you now and coming up with a bunch of issues where I found out that my settings have my video off, for example. So remember to test them ahead of time. You can create your own Zoom uh, basically meeting and uh, you can set it for a time and allow yourself to go into it. Uh, it might be a little bit different as a participant than as a host yourself, but uh, it might be good too for the synagogue to set up a mock room so people can try to log in ahead of time so you can all test together and troubleshoot together. Now you only need to go through all of these extra steps if the room in which the services are taking place is not open for 24 hours and that 24 hours uh, 
if that 24 hours starts before Shabbat comes in, then you can just open up that Zoom link and let it stay open, and your computer will stay on indefinitely. Um, or if the, the service is more than 24 hours away, let's say the second day of Chag or Shabbat after Shavuot, then you might need to use this extra scheduling uh, opportunity. Or if maybe there are multiple Zoom meetings, if you have something Friday night that starts after Shabbat and also something Saturday, or you have Saturday morning and you have Mincha, you want to set, you use this to set it up. The other thing to note is that when I used the tab scheduler, it didn't actually open at exactly the time which I specified, which was 5.18, it opened closer to 5.20. So you might want to open it, make sure to open it a few minutes early to make sure that it opens on time. And what that means, though, is that your camera might turn on your computer, your camera might be on all of Shabbat. So you might just want to put a little sticky note or something over it in order to block the camera. You can just take the sticky note off when you're ready to use it. One more piece of helpful advice is for day and time, this drop down is every 15 minutes, but you can go in here and put in whatever time you want. So 12.03 or whatever, you can put that in so that uh, you can have a little bit more fine tuning fine in terms of the time. So let's go back to our Zoom meeting and we can look at the settings. First we have video. So I can come into video settings. And here are the different settings which we are able to turn on or off. I want to make sure that this setting here, turn off my video when joining meeting, is unchecked. Because we don't want to turn it off when joining the meeting, we want it to be on already. Now you want to make sure that this setting here, which I have checked, always show video preview dialogue when joining a video meeting, which will show you your face and ask you if you want, uh, if you want to, if the picture looks good or whatever else. In this case, we actually want to turn that off because we don't want it to prompt anything. We want it to just go into the uh, into the Zoom call itself. Then we can go from video over here into audio, and I have settings right now in my settings, mute my microphone when joining a meeting. If I don't want to have to unmute myself, I should uncheck that button. Um, talk to your clergy to figure out what your default setting should be for your synagogue, but I will uncheck that, uh, that setting now so that I don't have to physically unmute myself. The new versions of Zoom, the newest version of Zoom, there's an issue where the admin, the host, can't actually unmute people. Um, only the individual, the individual has to check something or press a button to allow them to unmute yourself. So that's something which needs to be worked around. Rabbi Heller has tried to figure out some workarounds for it, and they're trying to get Zoom to change that or add a, uh, an option for it. So now we have video and audio all set up. What I'm going to do is go back in. Uh, I'm going to end this meeting, and I'm going to try one more time to schedule the meeting. I'm just going to leave the meeting. So I'll add one more time, which is Thursday. Uh, let's see, we want 6, 11 p.m. And we'll add it there. And now we'll wait for our Zoom meeting to open again. Notice here too, if you want to take out any of these times, you just put your mouse over that time and these X's show up. If you want to get rid of the URL entirely, you can just hit X. This will open every whatever you put in here. So every Thursday at 5.15, this very link will open up if I don't come in afterwards and X out of it, if it's not a reoccurring link. So we can see now 6.14 into 6.15, we finally have opened it, and I set it for 6.11. So it took about four minutes for it to actually open past the time I scheduled it for. You can see here that I succeeded in turning off the, the mute on entry feature. So I'm unmuted when I come into the room. My video is still off though, however, and I think what happened is that the program that I'm using right now to record my screen also had my video camera on. So I'm gonna go out of this and try it one more time, and I think now it'll actually work. One more setting which is helpful here is the enter full screen automatically when starting or joining a meeting. That way it'll come to a full, come to your full screen.
And now it appears like we're working. Maybe the jiggering I did has fixed it, um, and the closing out of Zoom entirely and starting a new, uh, a new Zoom room seems to have fixed it, and the video is starting. So I'm going to leave here. And we've successfully set up our tab scheduler to allow our Zoom meetings to be able to open with video and with audio. Um, this really demonstrates the need to practice ahead of time to make sure all of your kinks are worked out. Because things will happen, you have settings which you didn't know were set up in your computer, um, so you really need to practice this ahead of time uh, if you don't want to risk in not opening or opening the way you want actually on Shabbat or Chag. The last piece of it is stopping the stream, which if someone centrally, let's say you've hired someone to run and mute and unmute people, then they can just close the room. The room itself might close at a given time, which will close down the room for everyone else. Another solution which he gives here is to simply block the device when not in use and to put your headset away if you're using it. Um, you can also go through this process at the bottom of scheduling your computer to actually sleep at a given time. Um, it's not necessary, it depends on how secure you want your computer to be, whether you want things to be open longer than they need to be. But in essence, that is how we set up our computers to be as Shabbat friendly as possible when trying to join Zoom links or other sorts of links on Shabbat and holidays. And again, this, the process is super simple if, you open, if you're able to open the Zoom room ahead of time and set up everything. All you need to do is just this, these first couple of steps to make sure that it doesn't go to sleep and you don't have a screensaver on. Um, if you're trying to set up multiple Zooms, then uh, multiple Zooms or it's further than 24 hours out, then you actually have to go through this other piece for Mac or for a PC to set it up so it'll open on its own without you having to check anything, any boxes or click on anything.